Town Neck Beach and Old Harbor Marsh sit at the northwest corner of Cape Cod in the town of Sandwich, Massachusetts. With the waters of Cape Cod Bay lapping at the sands on the beach, it's a scene that's common around Cape Cod and one that attracts the thousands of people who live on and visit this beautiful area. But Town Neck Beach is unique among beaches on Cape Cod because of its proximity to the Cape Cod Canal. The canal, built by August Belmont's Boston, Cape Cod and New York Canal Company, was first navigated back in 1914, the same year as the opening of the Panama Canal. The privately owned toll waterway was never able to sustain itself financially, and in 1918, the operation of the canal was assumed by the U.S. Railroad Administration. It was purchased by the U.S. government in 1928 for $11 million and was deepened and widened during the Great Depression by the Army Corps of Engineers. Town Neck Beach starts at the southeastern jetty of the entrance to the Cape Cod Canal. And it's the combination of the two jetties protecting the canal entrance that results in Town Neck Beach being starved for sand. In fact, the jetty on the Scusset Beach side of the canal was extended in the 1970s to reduce the frequent dredgings required to keep the canal navigable. The impact on Town Neck Beach was recognized 50 years ago in a 1959 Army Corps of Engineers study warning that the beach was receding at the rate of three feet per year. In this program, we'll explore the ecology of Town Neck Beach and Old Harbor Marsh, the causes and potential solutions for the excessive erosion, and look into the competing interests of man and bird. The problem with Sandwich Town Beaches is that there's not an adequate supply of sediment coming into the system. Uh, the Cape Cod Canal has impeded a lot of the natural sediment movement down the beach and, and Town Neck Beach, Spring Hill Beach, the Town Sandwich Beaches have kind of experienced erosion over the last 100 years or so. What we have here is we have a barrier beach system that um, is basically a sand starved system and uh, the, the, normally the sand would flow from uh, Plymouth Highlands, uh, White Cliffs, down along the uh, Plymouth and Bourne Coast to Sandwich uh, on the other side of the uh, Cape Cod Canal and then uh, would continue to flow down and keep these beaches nourished, uh, moving the sand further to the east all the way to Sandy Neck and beyond. Um, when the canal was, uh, when the Corps of Engineers took over the canal, the uh, a jetty was constructed on the westerly side of the canal uh, and that interrupted that flow of sand. Um, over the years, the, the sand um, built up on the back side of the canal and uh, caused the Corps to spend uh, uh, sums of money to, to continually dredge the canal. So in the late uh, 60s, early 70s, they ex placed an extension on the, on the jetty to help cut uh, that flow of sand into the canal. Um, currently, the people on the, the unfortunate thing is here on this side of the uh, canal um, on the east side where the town beach is and the properties to the further to the east, Spring Hill, suffer from that starvation of sand. And the people on the westerly side at Scusset uh, Beach and uh, Phillips Road actually are drowning in sand. The homes on the Scusset side of the beach are being inundated and essentially buried in sand. And that's caused the whole ecology of this beach to change. Uh, as a child, there were extensive, active, large sandbars here, which diffused wave energy and protected the beach. Due to the lack of sediment uh, entering the area, the dune system has also began to breach in certain areas. And breach areas basically occur when larger storm events come through, are able to, to erode a good portion of the dune and water is able to clearly flow from the Cape Cod Bay area back into the marsh system. Uh, we're looking at a typical breach of a dune system behind us and that's part of that process of the barrier beach overwashing and moving landward onto itself. Um, problem with breach areas is that during those storm events they do allow massive amounts of waters back into the marsh system. The marsh itself is, is a healthy, vibrant marsh that probably is not in any danger due to the overwash areas. It's a natural process that occurs. However, upland infrastructure with the right amount of stormwater coming in could result in flooding of important town resources that reside landward of the marsh area. In fact, the town of Sandwich's main fire and police stations abut Old Harbor Marsh, along with many homes and businesses. 
If the barrier dune system at the east end of Town Neck Beach erodes away, the inlet to Old Harbor Marsh would widen and allow excessive volumes of seawater to flood the area on a regular basis. This animation of seawater intrusion into the marsh was prepared by Woods Hole Group. It shows how a storm event overwashes both sides of the inlet and poses a flood risk to the structures surrounding the marsh. This animation is of the Sandwich Old Harbor Marsh System Inlet um, and the impact of a 10-year storm event now that would occur uh, given the new breach of the system. So as you see here, we're showing water surface elevation as the storm event comes in, floods into the Old Harbor area, over the overwash areas. Uh, the velocity arrows of vectors show the, the speed of the movement through the system. Um, and you basically can see the flooding that could occur in this 10-year storm events due to the new breached inlet area. This additional animation illustrates how Old Harbor Marsh currently fills and drains with the high and low tides. When the high tide reaches 10 feet or more, the effect is much more dramatic, as we can see in this time-lapse video shot from the eastern side of the marsh. Combined with even the mildest storm surge, flooding of adjacent properties is virtually assured. The town has made progress towards securing the necessary permits to move forward with the dune renourishment program and a permanent fix to stop the eastward migration of the old Harbor Marsh Inlet. But not everyone, or everything in this case, sees the erosion of Town Neck Beach as a problem. Enter the piping plover, a federally and state protected bird species that thrives on rocky beaches with scarped dunes. The plover's eggs are nearly invisible against a backdrop of sand, pebbles, and rocks, which is exactly the habitat provided by the eastern end of Town Neck Beach. It is also the perfect living accommodations for leased terns, birds which share space with the plovers. What can we as citizens do to help preserve Town Neck Beach? Besides supporting the bigger projects of dune renourishment and the inlet stabilization, there is one simple thing everyone can do. That is, tread lightly in the area by staying on the footpaths and away from the dunes. Patrick Ellis recalls a more innocent time. We saw this happening all along. There were times when you saw more and more cobbles and less and less sand. It's hard for people to imagine this as a sandy, wonderful beach with tall dunes. And we were young and ignorant young people and would actually jump off those dunes with towels wrapped around our necks thinking we were Superman. But they were imposing structures, they were that big. Town Neck Beach is a recreational resource, a natural habitat, and a protective barrier that calls for our well-informed efforts to preserve it and ensure its ability to play these critical roles for generations to come. The problems highlighted in this program are not the result of Mother Nature. They are man-made, the unintended consequences of a beneficial project to assure safe passage into and out of the Cape Cod Canal. It is incumbent on us, therefore, to take reasonable steps to mitigate the damages brought upon this fragile ecosystem. We hope that everyone who visits and lives in our special corner of Cape Cod will join together and support the Town of Sandwich's efforts to manage and preserve Town Neck Beach for the benefit of all.